Let's get to know the artist behind the epic melodies, songs, and beats. Celebrating the best new music from around the world. This is the A State of Trance Podcast. Hey, what's up? My name is Ruben Olne. Welcome to a brand new Estate of Trance podcast here to celebrate the album release of Crowd Control called Smoke and Mirrors. So in the studio today, Mr. Tibor and Jordan. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Hi. Good, thanks for having us. It's nice to have you in the flesh, both of you in the studio, because you're from the Czech Republic. You're from Australia. Yes. Um, we'll get to that in the, in the, just a little bit. But first, every podcast we start the same. Um, I want to know if you, when did you fall in love with music and how did you fall in love with dance music? Start with Jordan. I oh, probably fell in love with trance music in the noughties. I used to be a runner and like I didn't really go out to clubs that much, but every time I'd go running, mm-hmm. I'd just put my headphones on, listen to trance. I didn't even know like who the artists were or whatever. It was just How did you find the music? Uh there's a podcast called Trance in France. Okay. Um I don't they don't do it anymore. Um and I just every time downloaded it and just Loved it. The endorphins I always got when I was running, and I kind of associated that with trance and being happy, and went on from there. Okay. Yeah, and then, uh, I don't know why, but I always wanted to do something with music. I just didn't know what, you know. And I got my like first little piano when I was at eleven. Yeah. And I was just like putting, you know, numbers into the notebook from like a music school, and then I was putting them on a piano and learning how to play it. And so you made up your own notes, like yeah, one like, one is for C and two exactly, for C. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and. uh Eventually, uh, we got this TV called the Viva TV. Ah, it's yes. It's like a German television and they had this uh, one thing called Club Rotation and it was just filled with like amazing trance and music from people like Paul Van Dyke, you know, uh, who else was there? Pete Blank and Jasper Jones, you know, and I was like, wow, what's this music? And mm-hmm. I was just like, I, I, I want to make music like that. I had no idea how to, but I said, I want to make music like that. It's funny because we have a lot of guests in the studio. Also, recently, for example, Cold Blue that said said the exact same thing as you did right now. Oh, that really? you that you grew up and you watched Viva uh, with Paul Van Dyk and uh, Foreign Angel would come by as a video of Robert Miles and all those those kind of tracks. Yeah, I think it was very influential for many actually young people. You mm-hmm. know, because it was new, it was fresh, it was something that wasn't here before. Yeah, and how did you bridge the gap from becoming uh, from being a dance music lover into becoming a producer or a DJ? Lot and lot of struggles. Because, you know, back then there was no YouTube, there was no online lessons, no tutoring, and I'm not really people who knew how to make electronic dance music in my country. So basically I met a friend, he had this thing called Fast Tracker where you could just use samples to create music and we just started to... You had to start it from DOS, I remember. Yeah. From a disc, floppy disk, uh, F22. (laughs) I remember I was like carrying like eight uh, floppy disks at home. Each had like 1.5 megabytes yeah. and I came home and one of those was not working. And I was like, oh my God, now I have to walk 30 minutes back just with a new disc. Uh, it was such a It was nightmare. so weird that you had to put in the automations and the samples with numbers yeah, in the just, tracker. Yeah, uh, he just basically, okay, zero is like nothing and you go one to, to 127. But, you know, you got to the results you wanted when you had patience and... Like really, like my first tracks, you probably don't want to hear them because you would lose your hearing, but it was a start, you know? Yeah. And eventually then fast forward 2006, I start to use Ableton and things just escalated from there. Okay. What about you, Jordan? Oh, I'm a newbie in comparison. I didn't, I have none of those memories. Probably about four years ago, I just downloaded Ableton Lite and started just messing around on it. And, you know, I just went on YouTube and found yeah, some tutorials it's, here it's, and there. It's amazing what's out there now. It's so accessible, isn't it? Um, so I was lucky in that sense. And then, you know, I was plugging along. And then when I met Tibor, sort of that sort of escalated things and I started taking it really seriously. What triggered you to download Ableton? Because you were listening to music for such a long time yeah. already. And then you were like, okay, I want to do this too. Yeah, I think I was, you know, I, I, I in Australia, my day job, I work as a doctor and I've done that for 15 or so years. And mm. it's rewarding, but stressful. And I just felt like I needed something else in my life, some sort of, passion to express myself in another way and be and be artistic and I've always loved music and you know so why not you know do something completely different I think it's healthy and uh, if, it is, if yeah. I may add to it I was actually asking the same question yesterday Jordan and it was like well you know there were these tracks and I was like imagining them going a different way so I just wanted to know how to do it so I can do it on yeah, my yeah, own yeah. And do it better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, when I listened back to to your first release of Jordan, that was, was about 2020, I guess, on Sonda and Silent Shore. Those were pretty much 
uh, uplifting trance kind of tracks. And here you are with a brand new album on the crowd control in a total different vibe. And I have to say the same for uh, for Tibor as well. Yeah, from 2006 on, you pretty much did uplifting only for 14, 15 years. Yeah. And now those are, of course, your solo projects. And now here you are as crowd control. So can you tell us a little bit why crowd control came to life or how did it come to life? I, I think it was a bit of a happy accident. You know, when I was still learning production and very early on with Tibor, I'd done this idea with my um, friend, he's a vocalist, Alexis Naylor, who she's on... Um, she made the, the title track for She's the album. She's on the title yeah. track as well. Smoke and Mirrors. As we did this track together called After Tomorrow and my production was terrible, but the the, the idea was there and I showed it to Tibor sort of nervously thinking, I don't know, just, hey, I've done this. It's not uplifting trance, but I've just done it. And then it kind of just all clicked and then we just started. Yeah, he was like, this. I didn't want to show you this one because I, I was felt embarrassed. I was like, dude, there is something there. I was like, I could feel it. And you, for, for me, it was something special because... I could teach people how to make music, but yeah. I, you know, I had that burnout and I just couldn't do music myself. I just yeah. couldn't because find the right idea. You didn't ideas. have inspiration, any, any energy. Yeah, anymore, I, felt, yeah. I just felt numb. And then I hear this song is like, I feel something there. Like, send me the project. I'm going to play around. And about, about two hours, the song was born. You know, <laughs> and I sent it off to Jordan. He did his ads with his crazy pitch downs, pitch ups. And it worked out. And, you know, and Armin fell in love with the track, put it on a compilation of State of Trance 2020. And from then on, we just started like doing, you know. So basically, Crowd Control was created to help Jordan express himself in a, as a musician. And for me, it was sort of like a saving hand, you know. Yeah. So, and I can do music now. And, you know, it's still trance, even you call it techno. There's yeah. still a lot of emotional melodies and it makes people move, which is the most important thing. Very true. But let me rewind a little bit more because you just said out of nowhere, you sent a track to Tibor. How did you get in touch with each other or, or why did you get to the point or how did you get to the point that you were like, okay, I'm going to send something over right, to Tibor. Right, right. So well, we, you know, initially when I was doing Uplifting Trance, I was uh, often going to Ahmadi University um, side and looking at the, the different courses and then uh, yeah, okay. there was yeah. a run from Reorder mm -hmm. I did a course I really really liked it and there was a remix competition so I like put my heart and soul in it yeah. and I didn't win but that's alright that's you know that's all part of it but then um, lockdown was still starting and then I realised like Tiwa was doing online lessons as well in yeah. production and I thought this is perfect so I reached out to him and just started with yeah. one lesson. And and it would probably never happen if it wasn't for my wife, Sharka, you know, because she told me, well, you used to teach some people sometimes. She's, She's like, here in the studio as well. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Revital. And uh, she was like, okay, so how about you start teaching more people? And we just put a price down. I was like, uh, I don't know if I have patience for it, but actually found that I have a patience for people and I like to teach them, you know, how I learn to make music and yeah. help them to make their music come to life. So Jordan became one of your students? Yeah. And he was actually one of the most thorough ones because he did uh, lessons like four hours a week and he was doing all of his homework. Like I could see that this guy is serious, you know? It is not just, oh, I don't have nothing to do, but I really want to know how music is done. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm actually proud of him. It's a very good student. Oh, thanks, man. And, uh, and then you, you had, of course, you had a, a, a how do you say, a teacher-student relationship. How did it evolve into starting something like crowd control? You want to go? No, you go. Okay. <laughs> well, then we were like, we stopped doing the, the teaching thing because we're like, not doing like, it anymore. No, no, no. We don't do it anymore. Okay. No, with for each like, other. You still, like, you still teach. I still teach. Oh, okay. With the I two of you. Okay. okay with two yeah, of us. Yeah, yeah. And, and now we were like working on new tracks. Like, okay, did this track work? Armada, Armin loved it. How about we just try to do some more? And then we find out that Jordan is a great writer mm -hmm. and that he knows how to write great songs in terms of lyrics and the lyric melody. So we did uh, track Hush. And I was like, I had this like, I had this like old project when I was like doing a masterclass on uh, melodic techno vibes and sort of like electro progressive house. And I was like, let's like using this bass line with the kick and it just evolved from there. And we had second track. And again, it was on a state of trans compilation. I was like, okay, something is happening Something's there. Something's happening here, yeah. And that was the time where I was like, okay, we need a name for this thing. And I was looking on my, uh, on my keyboard. And I was like, control. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just joking like imagine there was like this button where you have like a crowd and you can control it's like dude that's a great name yeah. and I was like okay let's call crowd control and then we searched in the crowd control everything was called crowd control so it's like okay let's just do it like the two keys on the keyboard like crowd plus ctrl so when you push it the crowd goes wild 
That's smart. <laughs> so what if you push the button? What happens? Ah, oh, crowd crowd goes wild. Yeah, really. <laughs> but also yeah. we go wild, dude. We did already like twenty seven tracks together. Twenty seven. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Yeah. I I have to say because I've I've been in sessions with you two guys and it's it feels like um a train just drives by it goes so fast because we were just sitting there sharing a, a Zoom screen of I yeah. think it was your studio too or um and just didn't stop it's like okay this 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 that that that, that bam 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 and before we know it oxygen was born oh yeah, yeah. that's table table is the quick one i think we we've just got this workflow that works for us you know we sort of have crazy ideas we pick one table works at lightning speed like you've seen then i take it i put in just agonize over everything put crazy ideas and then table edits me down and Track's done. And, yeah, then, and, and it then, works well. And then do it again. And we so. argue a lot. He goes like, no, nah, I think this sounds cheesy. Sorry to imitate. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, but I want it there. It's like, no, this was already there before. We have to find out something else. So he pushes even my boundaries, you know, in a way that it creates something new. So it doesn't re- remind you of something that was already here, which is nice because you get inspired yeah, Because by this must artists. be super hard for you because... He was a student, you were the teacher. And now he's like, hey, but wait a minute, we have to do it like this. And you're like, wait a minute, that's not how we do it here. Mm. No, we don't do that that way. We're basically like, we have to both love what we're doing. Otherwise, you know, what would be the point, you know? And every track that we make is a track that we want to be proud to present on a stage and let it go out, you know? So we both have to be happy. And we have to have fun doing it. And sometimes if you're not having fun doing it and you're struggling, it's that project probably not going to work. So we're just going to skip it and start Yeah, that's what one. we decided. Like if we struggle for way too long, we just keep the track and just move on. You know, yeah. sometimes it's hard, hard um, breaking because you spend like two weeks on a track and you go like, I don't think I feel it anymore, you know? And uh, well, it's it's life, you know, new ideas pop up and you never know when you come back to it. Yeah. 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 So let's um, dive into something that I'm very interested in because uh, I've worked with people from around the world as well. Sometimes, for example, with 11, we have nine hours time difference. Um, you have even, or also a nine hours time difference, I guess. Uh, depends on daylight saving yeah, between eight and summer. 10. And yeah. both of you have insanely busy schedules for yourself. You have a busy job and you're teaching as well. You're doing a lot of music. How and where do you find the time to actually work together on something? Or do you work separately on, on the same project or is it always together? It's almost always together. Yeah. Um, and basically sort of our priority in life as well was like Tuesdays, Thursdays, we have our set times. It kind of works because it's after work for me. It's in the evening, it's morning for Tibor. Um, when they, every time daylight saving hits, we, it's different, it works at different times. So <laughs> Jet lag again. That goes well, crazy. Then. Yeah, one's late and one's early or something like that. And we just sort of made it our priority and we just did it solidly, you know, every single time and just, yeah. Basically every Tuesday and Thursday, I know that I'll be in a studio with Jordan and we just go over, if it's not music, then we go over our YouTube channel, you know, what should be next, our radio show, which we started, which is actually called We Are The Control. Yeah. So if you guys want to check it out, it's on in there. And uh, we just work and whatever happens, unless, you know, somebody's on a, on a way or need to go to the doctor, then we always find the time, you know, to sit down and do music together. So you have a routine, never skip a day, always Tuesdays, yeah. Thursdays, yep. you have to work for you to start of the day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll drink your first coffee and join us. Yeah, we've done this, we've done this cracking for, a little beer. Yeah, for years now. Yeah. And it's working and it's working really well, you know, and I think it's just thanks to, I would say, thank you COVID because all the technology just popped up that you can basically do music this way, yeah. you know, and Zoom allows you to also do like uh, live sessions with musicians as well. You just turn on the original sound and you can record, Yeah, which is pretty neat, you know, and uh, it's good to have that feedback. It's not like being together in one studio, but it's very close. Have you ever spent actual time in the studio together as well yeah i've yeah. been i've been to prague uh three times now yeah. so um i stay i stay with reorder and miss reorder yeah um so yeah it's nice to actually sit in the same environment as well but it, it you know it works and it yep. goes even faster you know yeah i bet because um i find it always hard when you work with someone online try to read the energy or or get fed the energy um how do you make sure that everybody's on top of the game? Or do you sometimes have off days as well, even though you're working together? Or uh, I reckon, yeah, tables call me some pretty bad days, especially hard day at work or something. And I just tell him, I'm feeling, feeling awful. Yeah, And then I just ask him, so how about we just don't do music, let's just do something else, you know? So yeah. we try to find what actually we enjoy at that very moment. Yeah, And if it's not m- making music, it will be something else. And I remember like Jordan was working really hard for the past few months as a doctor. And then he was like, I could see that he has enough. He had like a producer's block, just nothing was coming out. He went for EDC, came back, 
dude, this guy's like a music machine now. <laughs> <laughs> and I have those too, you know, sometimes I wake up in the morning, I was like, oh, I don't want to do music today. Yeah. So we just chat, you know, and uh, think, plan ahead, you know, think about who we want to work with next and just like, have like good friendly chat sometimes. It's better than a wasted time in studio. That's very true. So what do you do if you don't have inspiration? Do you buy, watch tutorials together or you just work on branding or what is something that you do? We but speak we anymore. speak about our doggies yeah. and, and their struggles, you yeah. know, <laughs> and families and really just like real life thing, you know, but I don't think we ever watch tutorials together. No. We, we watch uh, Sex in the City <laughs> together when Jordan is here. <laughs> I guess that's something that you can do. <laughs> I guess, yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just a bystander. And then yeah. the, the, the ideas come, they just, they just come. If you force it, it's not going to come. And if you just step back for a little bit yeah, and be kind to yourself and also go, look, we've done a lot of work. Yeah. So. so now what I'm interested in also is that, uh, Tibor, you started making music in, let's say, 2004, 2000, maybe? 1997. Oh, well, way before that. And you started roughly around 2019, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do you, how, how do you, how, how different are the way this, ways that you are working? Because you come out of an age that stuff was just hardware. You didn't have any tutorials and whatsoever. And he doesn't know better than there's tutorials everywhere, templates, stuff like that. Well, sometimes I push him hard, but it's very hard to surprise him lately because he just learned everything there is to know about how I produce. And uh, <laughs> he has his own style of producing, you yeah. know, and sometimes I go like, uh, like no. How do you do that? Wait a minute. Uh, he comes with like stuff because I'm old, let's say, you know, <laughs> and I have my ways. And then he comes with something that is like completely new. I'm like, hmm, I never thought of that, you know? So it's also like a refreshing for me as a, as a music producer, because I see new techniques that I never tried before, you know? Like some other day, I think he, sh he did like something with a, with like a delay on the vocal, which was like going like left and right and up and down and pitch was changing and what not. Like, wait a minute, what's happening? I was like, where's this coming from? I was like, wow. And he's like, oh, I saw it in a tutorial by, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, that famous vocalist who did a track with Armin. <laughs> 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 he has the vocal mastering class, a vocal class. Which one? Christian? Christian Brains. Oh, yeah, 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 Christian Brains. So he's yeah, yeah. in his master class and I was like, wow, that's clever. Yeah. It's like, uh, so yeah, it's funny to say that the student is teaching his teacher, but you know, <laughs> it's good. It's yeah, good. Yeah. It's, it's a refresh for you all the time. It stays and, and probably helps you also with teaching other people as well, because you maybe Jordan will bring in a technique that you would use in your. Yeah, it, it usually does. But, you know, basically I, I try to teach people who have basically almost no knowledge because there I can navigate them to, to do the f music the right way. So they, because there's so many tutorials online, yeah. which basically just trying to sell you stuff, you know, yeah. and you'd be like, oh, if I have this plugin, I'm going to do this. I was the same, like when the YouTube popped up and I saw first tutorials, I was like buying plugins like crazy. Now I have like 650 plugins from which of them like true first I don't even use anymore. Yeah, very true. The plugin business is an interesting one. Yeah, you know, they're selling a dream. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you put this on your master, it sounds fantastic. Yeah, you'll be the next Armin van Buren. Easy, easy. Okay, let's talk about the album, uh, Smoke and Mirrors. First of all, how did you come up with the, track of the album title? I was keen when we decided we we're doing an album, I was quite keen on the name pretty early on. I just love it. Like I like watching magic shows and I've always liked the phrase smoke and mirrors. I use it like all the time, um, you know, and it just in, you can interpret it in different ways, but I always thought about, you know, I get overwhelmed in life. I get, you know, distracted by all the sparkly things that are going on, all the lies or, you know, that the we- The charade. The charade it is yeah. that we tell, we tell each other and we're always presenting our best self. And, you know, I just wanted to- Acknowledge it, it's a bit tongue in cheek and just say, well, let's not do that. Let's just sit down, two friends, let's make some music. Let's, let's put our emotions in it. And that's what, that's what the track, that's, that's what the album's about. And then after that, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's all about the music in the album, you know, and the, we wanted to make really something new that sort of boasts against, you know, the normality and what everybody hears in other albums, you know. Like, firstly, we didn't, didn't want to do like an album that was, all one style, but at least one team, you know? So we're going with a team that we have, which is like, you have that sort of like a dark beat, you know, and it's filled with growls and some, almost like horror sounds. But then on top of that, you get those real lush, beautiful melodies that make you feel something, you know? So you can sort of 
relate with every of those tracks. You know, yeah. each track tells a story. And yes, as Jordan said, it's all smoke and mirrors, you know, and also this whole music scene is a small, all smoke and mirrors. Like people think I'm a millionaire, you know, yeah. but no, I still drive a Kia, you know, and I'm happy and I don't care because it's all about the music for us, you know? Yeah, that's, that's really nice. For you. That's actually true. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors in the music scene because a lot of people interpret things that are not like that exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Well, okay. So Smoke and Mirrors was the, the title. And how did you start out bum- bundling tracks together? Because you, ju- you just mentioned you that, that you made 27 tracks, but the album has 13 on it, something like that. 14, yeah. 14. 14. So how did you decide which tracks would end up on the album or which were going to be skipped? We had to be very, very selective. We had a few a few releases from last because year. Because you have to you, you have to kill some babies. Then. You do, unfortunately. Yeah. You do. You have to Poor be. baby. <laughs> <laughs> there were some babies that we were like really touched attached to. Yeah. Like ba- let's call them tracks. Tracks. Let's let yeah. That's yeah, better. It sounds b- very bad when you say babies yeah. attached and killed. Uh, yeah. So yeah, some tracks were there that we really wanted to have on the on the album, but um, after a lot of talks with our ANR, who we really trust him, like shout out to Harry. Yeah. yeah. Because he has years of experience in music and, you know, everybody was telling us the same thing and he just confirmed every time the same thing. Like, it's a great track, but it's it's just not, you know, what we expect or people would expect from you. And he was probably right. So it's like, okay, let's put it on shelf. Maybe one day, you know, we refresh it or do something with it. But it's it's hard. There were some tracks we were like, oh my God, it's going to be great. This track is like, us. it gives such a good message. And then in the end, you know, quality. It's about the quality, putting out your best tracks, you know. Mm-hmm. You can make an album with 50 tracks, but who will listen to all the 50 tracks? You want to give them the story that makes sense, you know. So some tracks just had to go, unfortunately. But yeah. I think it's normal. So which one of the tracks was on there that you would have picked Jordan on there on the album? Or you, Rio, uh, Tibor, of course. Um, which one was the one that you wanted to have on the album, but the other one said no? Oh, that's on the album. That's not on the album. Oh, that's not on the album. And that, that you want to have on there, but Tibor was like, nah, we have to skip this one. Oh. <laughs> Putting you on the spot. No, no, no. <laughs> I started thinking, I'm, no, some of, them, some of them didn't even have names as well. That's the thing. So. But I, I know the track that, that uh, Jordan was really fighting to have it on the album. And then we had to cut it. Which one? Different person. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This was like his favorite because he wrote yeah, the lyrics, yeah. you know, and it's was basically about Jordan. Yeah. You know, and it was like singing, I'm a different person. And but was, you sang on it. No, no, oh. that was, I wrote, I wrote the um, top line with you as well, Tibor. Yeah. Um, and it was with ben, ben Thrills who sang Hush and Hi. He's an Australian singer with that yeah. incredible, oh, I love his voice. It's, in, it's incredible. Um, so I was, I was emotionally attached to it, but I think sometimes you have to just separate your emotions for the bigger picture and, you know, yeah, and then also like, we also we had still sad about it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> then well, we also had like a different version of our track "Smoke and Mirrors." Yeah, yeah. But uh, we just couldn't use the whole vocal because we just kept hearing from everyone like that vocal just doesn't fit the track. I was like, okay, so we just kept at least the the small portion of it in the breakdown, and it just fits super well. So in the end, I'm actually happy that all the other part of the vocals are gone because now you can enjoy the music a little bit more. Yeah, because there you tra- there's so much happening in those tracks. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. there's a there's a building, there's a sort of a drop, which is what you say, it's more dark. Then the lush parts comes in and then the big break comes in. Like, yeah. z- like Zuma. Zuma, yeah. Oh, I love that track. That's such yeah. a, that's, that's one favorite. of my favorite of the album. That's I my think. favorite. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, mine too. <laughs> well, there we go. There, you already have the next single yeah, lined up already. I'll see you. Now, um, what I would love to know from you guys, because you already uh, released stuff by yourself as well, solo projects and Reorder has been or is still very successful as well. Um, how do you decide what you're going to be doing in the future right now? Is this something crowd control? Is that going to be something that you will put all your time in and just go for it? Or is reorder still happening as well? Or is Jordan Tobias happening as well? Oh, look, I'll, I'll always love uplifting uh, trance, but you know, I only have so much free time and yeah. I really you know, feel crowd control for me. If I'm doing music, that's where my heart and soul is yeah. really. And that's what makes me feel fulfilled. So, um, you know, that's, that's for music, it's crowd control for me. Yeah. Yeah, I always say like when something work, works, don't fix it, you know. And um, I still do my reorder stuff because why not? I love doing trance music and occasionally it hits me and I can do something. Actually, I think I have two more tracks coming on a State of Trance label this year. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, one is a, 
a collaboration with Ghost Etiquette. Okay. These guys are, I think they are going to be one of the biggest trans acts in They're next amazing. year. Some of your students also in, Also started as my students yep. here from, from Canada. These guys are incredible. The music they write is, oof, just gives me shivers. So we did the track together and then there was another Armada University thing with uh, the guys First Effect. So we're doing like a track, uh, Nicely called Hagelslag. Hagelslag, okay. <laughs> Chocolate and, sprinkles. But um, those are just two tracks. And, uh, you know, I, I realized I didn't have to, like, do one track a month. You know, why? You know, I just want to do when when it hits me. Yeah. When it really hits me, the inspiration, I just do a track. So for now, I'm just focusing more on crowd control because I really enjoy it, you know, and I don't have to do it on my own. So if I feel stuck or troubled, I can always pass it on to Jordan, you know, mm. and it's a nice ping pong, you know. Working with someone is much easier than doing everything on your own. And I learned it the hard way that sometimes you need to ask for help. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Sometimes you just get stuck in a, in a loop for yourself. And yeah, if you have someone that helps you out. It's that, lonely. It's Producing nice. alone is lonely. Yeah, well, it's it's all that I'm used to. That's why I love doing collabs Yeah, you know, uh, a lot more than doing solo music as well. Yeah, me too. Because when you work with someone, someone else is always bringing in something inspiring. At least that's what I think. Yeah. I have a question for Ruben, though. Yeah, uh, we're how, turning how did you, the tables. How did you find uh, working with crowd control on uh, Oxygen? I think it was great. Uh, how it, I think we can share the whole story, right? How, yeah, it, yeah. how it started out. So, um, 88 Birds, or Diane, is, and sent over the vocal to me, uh, or a whole bunch of vocals, probably did the same to you. And um, Oxygen was in there also. And I was like, wow, I love this vocal so much. So, I had the parts, I started working on, on it already. And then, Harry from Armada, the A&R, was like, hey, I heard you were working on this uh, already and uh, the guys from Crowd Control want to work on this vocal as well. So do, you, so do you consider doing a collaboration maybe with them? I was like, oh, I don't know. I love the vocal so much. I kind of want to do it by myself. But at a certain point, I was like, I really like the Crowd Control tunes because it's it's close to what I do as well. Yeah. Um, so I was like, well, let's go. Let's just do it. And that's uh, and then we planned in some uh, some sessions. We did the song together, and I'm really really happy with how, how everything turned out. And premiering at the at the State of Trends in Utrecht on the main stage, that was yeah, that was something else. Oh, there were some reactions. That was beautiful. Yeah, and now you see that pe more people are getting to know it because it's out obviously and uh, played at a lot of shows already. So yeah, it's been uh, very fruitful and uh, I think also exciting and nice collaboration with you guys because. Um, the sound that you guys are producing, I'm not putting any, how do you say it? We say it in Dutch, like feather in your butt, but um, <laughs> just give you a lot of props. But you guys are inventing something, uh, a new sound in trance that's not there because there's melodic techno, there is there is uh, trance, there's progressive, but you are right in the middle of everything. Yeah. That's something that Hellslow is also doing right now. So yeah, props, just keep on do doing what you're doing. And for me, I'm just happy to be part of that album. Oh, thank you, oh, we will. And, and thanks for mentioning it because it's basically what we were talking about, that we wanted to bring something new. Yeah. But it's also been very challenging in the beginning because, you know, when you send them music that wasn't here before, uh, all the NRs always have trouble with it. Like, okay, what do we do with this? Like, yeah. where do we release it? Like, who is going to listen to it? Mm -hmm. Like, it's always a risk. So another shout out to Harry for believing us since the <laughs> Thank start. You, Harry. Because without him, probably the album would not be happening because he really rooted for us and uh, directed us the way that it's happening. And like having this album out is a dream come true, to be honest. A lot of hard work. A lot of hard A lot work. of hours. But fun. And a lot of fun, I guess. That's well, important. you guys you guys really ready at fun to get as well when you do the, all these live streams that you recorded. Yes. Uh, did you? How did you find the spots where to put those live streams to? together well we have an amazing manager my wife yeah and why don't you does, come here on the microphone yeah, and just tell here. us a little bit about it because um well i've I recently played for referee in the czech republic also and just before i started playing this uh this woman and great and a great talent as well also was on the stage so tell us please what is your involvement in crowd control sir uh i doing like the social medias a little bit of booking so a little bit high yeah yeah it's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, oh, this was unexpected. So. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's how it goes in the State of Trance podcast. Yeah, uh, I doing like the, all the social media and everything around, like you mentioned, where they shooting the live sets. I usually doing like everything, like the gear, the spot, everything, and they just they get the date and time. Yeah, we're going here. Uh, what we doing at Thursday? Yeah, we are here, here, here. <laughs> like, how do you get permission? 
permission to work on these on these spots because it's always beautiful environments and they, I don't know. I usually how. use my connections, so yeah. I ask somebody who knows somebody. <laughs> She's very persuasive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can tell. Um, that's a that's a good thing. You know how she calls me? I'm I'm her long time long term project. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not and sure she, that is a good she thing. She worked very hard on me to becoming a better person. <laughs> but now you also started DJing yourself and producing yeah, a little true, bit yeah. as well. A little bit, like we don't have much time, but we did the remix with the guys, mm -hmm. and I really like it and hope it get out. <laughs> Free from desire already. Yeah. and mm -hmm. yeah, I start DJing too a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Well, keep on going, and uh, thank you for the hard work you put together for these guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so now the album is uh, out uh, the twenty first. Um, what is what is coming next for crowd control? Well, as we said, we have 27 tracks. So there, after the album, we plan to start releasing singles again. Mm -hmm. And maybe, like, there, we have, like, big dreams. And we really would love to do some more collaborations with people. Of course, we want to do one with you again. Let's do it. Because yeah. it was yeah, great work Definitely there. Yeah. And then uh, we really want to work with Cosmigate. But, you know, it's like... One of those streams were like, will it happen? But we thought we'll never collab with Frey Corson and it just came to us. There you, you go, know? yeah. Mm. So you never know. And uh, then we currently are thinking, okay, we managed to do the album. The music is successful. We have like, like we have tracks that have like millions of streams, you know. So how about we start thinking about uh, management, like a booking management and maybe do some gigs yeah. slowly. So we'll see. Like uh, with the ASOT in London, you know, which... Uh, it's something you'll never forget. Yeah. And then um, we all do all of these live streams in a special places that we really enjoy. And uh, yeah, we played the Ace of the Guest Mix, which was like, wow, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our honor as well, to be honest. Well, thank you so much, guys. Once again, uh, congratulations on the album. Make sure to stream it, make sure to like it, make sure to, yeah, to just enjoy the music, to be honest. And it's somewhere in between dance floor and listening at, at home as well, because there's some great songs on there as well. So keep it up, boys. Thank, Thank you, you for answering all these questions. And we'll be back next time with a new Estate of Trans podcast, also with a guest from Melbourne, Achilles. See you then. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for tuning in. Check all previous episodes on YouTube or your favorite podcast portal. A State of Trans podcast.